and what kind of impact can your technology have globally? So uh, on a global scale, like what I stated previously, we will be giving a zero emission machine, uh, which uh, means that it's a completely eco-friendly machine, which is going to come out. And uh, our mission is also to uh, ensure that the electricity bill uh, on a global scale is reduced by 50%. So what the final question, could you explain how international organizations should approach you? So for uh, international organizations, uh, even they would actually have to uh, visit our particular website where we have a support. <laughs>
and the people around it can be safe and secure. So we give a machine which gives zero emissions. That's what we are very proud of. So when you go to other another uh, segment, suppose we are talking about uh, hydro. For hydro, we have a lot of uh, cons again, where uh, there's a displacement of habitat which is there. You're required to uh, create dams and all of it for which you'll have to further move away uh, the natural habitats of uh, the people and uh, the marine life. Whereas we do not have such uh, drawbacks. Our, we provide the green energy with zero emissions. The same goes with solar. Solar is a seasonal uh, thing. If you see, they uh, work efficiently for only a couple of months, for about four five months. So we can substantiate the remaining number of months and produce better output for solar. And uh, even when you're talking about uh, wind, so wind is also a very seasonal uh, sort of thing where only for about four five months you get the strong wind capacity and based on the speed of the wind, well, electricity gets generated. And uh, the drawbacks for uh, wind is like uh, if the space which is required for it and then again at the moment of natural habitat and all of it. Whereas uh, Green Cairo does not come with such drawbacks. And when you're talking about bio waste, the last thing, bio waste is more or less uh, you require bio waste as an input to give. We don't require any input, so this comes in at zero input. And bio waste also uh, provides pollution. So each and every other energy sector which you have specified, whether it comes to thermal, whether it comes to uh, nuclear or anything as such, thermal also you are, de uh, you are uh, degrading the natural resources which are there. And with all those issues which are there, our one solution can provide a complete eco-friendly solution for the entire planet. Very nice explanation, Mr. Roshan. And what kind of impact can your technology have globally? So, uh, on a global scale, like what I stated previously, we will be giving a zero emission machine, uh, which uh, means that it's a completely eco-friendly machine, which is going to come out. And uh, our mission is also to uh, ensure that the electricity bill uh, on a global scale is reduced by 50%. So, whatever you are currently uh, like paying for, we are going to reduce your electricity bill by 50%, So, which is going to be a, a very big saver for almost everyone throughout the world. Will you expand your business market globally? If yes, how is it? Yes, we are actually uh, going to expand. Uh, uh, we are expanding our market globally, and uh, for that you would uh, you would actually have to visit our website to know more. What's the maximum megawatt of power that can be generated in one space? So that actually depends on the specifications and requirements which are being given to us. So dependent on that, we'll be able to produce. We don't have any limit as such. We can produce based on any requirement which is given. How is your dealing with governments? So we deal with all the governments uh, locally. So every uh, place, like well, let's talk about uh, uh, country-wise and internationally. So we would go with the regional local governments. We would like to understand their policies. And along with them, we would like to work together. How is your business with the private organizations? So, uh, along with private organizations, we are into two uh, modes. Uh, for our national uh, uh, expansion, we would like to do a channel partner uh, channel partnership along with them. For an international uh, collaboration, we would like to uh, collaborate internationally with the other countries overseas. How can electricity can be generated in hot desert places? So, uh, we provide uh, customized solutions. Uh, it does not depend on uh, any uh, climate or anything as such. So based on the climate, we would give customized solutions. How can electricity be produced in the external cold areas? Uh, like I said before, we will uh, assess that particular place. We would check the climatic situation over there. Depending on that, we will actually customize our particular unit so that it suits that particular climate. What capacity and how many machines do you intend to manufacture in the first stage? So, uh, during the first uh, phase, we are actually going to give about three machines uh, on a national basis for every state. And internationally, for the countries which we have selected, we are going to give three machines out. How do you set price for selling the machines which you manufacture? So, the prices uh, vary from uh, place to place, like when we talk about national and international basis. So, that uh, we would uh, sit across and discuss them in person. How will you market in all states across the country? So throughout the country, we have actually kept channel partnerships. So uh, uh, if uh, uh, the interested parties would like to visit our particular website, we have a particular uh, channel partnership uh, form which they would actually have to fill, by which we will take things forward. How many countries have you already chosen internationally? So internationally, we have actually chosen about 52 countries. 
and uh, we have our entire database based on that and uh, from that we are going to take things forward. On what criteria do you select collaboration partner organization in selected international countries? So for international basis what we actually do is we would like to have these reputed uh, companies for each uh, respective country to come forward and uh, the, we will have our own uh, background verification by which we would verify we will sort these companies and once we feel fit on our collaboration standards we would uh, go ahead with collaboration. Where do you manufacture and send the machines needed by international organizations? So like I said we have a manufacturing unit uh, held at uh, Totapurin, Tamil Nadu India which also happens to have a port access. So we will be exporting all our machines over there, from there to the respective country. The final question, could you explain how international organizations should approach you? So for uh, international organizations, uh, even they would actually have to uh, visit our particular website where we have a separate uh, page for international collaborations. And uh, on uh, visiting that website, they will have to fill a particular form where they would have to state their name, uh, their email ID, the respective country that they would like to do the power sale for. And from there, we will uh, get the submission of that particular form. Thanks, Mr. Roshan. We are very grateful for your time and willingness to join us. Thank you once again for being a part of this insightful discussion. Thank you so much. I hope all the viewers got the answers from Mr. Roshan. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for everyone. the clarification. Thank you.